everyone, welcome back to Adobe Live here on Behance. I'm Kathleen and I'm here with Tracy Ching. Welcome. So this is your first time live streaming. It is. Do you have any concerns or comments before we get started? I mean, the concerns are many, okay. but I don't know if they're All worth the mentioning at this time, but yeah. <laughs> so chat, you need to be nice. We know you will be. You always are. Uh, this week <laughs> on Adobe Live, we are focusing on creative campaigns. So we have a bunch of different designers and artists from different aspects of the creative world coming together to design a fictional creative conference. So we got James, Christine, Jessica, and Tracy all working on a conference with the theme of create and share. In chat, we have a project for you today. We want you to create the badges for this conference. So if you click on the contest tab at be.net slash live, submit your contest entries within the hour and you could win a free year of Creative Cloud. Which is really cool. We'll be doing, cool. yeah, I, I want that. Can yeah, I do it? I get to enter if I can do that <laughs> yes, on the side? Yes, work on that right now, actually. We're also going to be doing two giveaways, one in 30 minutes and one in an hour. So stick around for that. And there will be little animations over here on the screen to kind of let you know what's coming up. So Tracy, can you introduce yourself? What um, are you about? That's a loaded question that I wasn't prepared for. <laughs> no? um, a, a little bit about me is obviously, as the super cool animation said, I'm Tracy Ching. I'm mm -hmm. a, uh, an illustrator, a little bit graphic designer. Um, I work out of Washington, D.C. So flew over this great country yes. to be here with Welcome. you guys today. Welcome to the Looking West Coast. To it. <laughs> awesome. And how long have you been designing and illustrating? Yeah, that's, it's an interesting journey um, from, from when I started to now, yeah. but I guess um, I've been freelance for about five years now, and then um, before then I was sort of like fiddling around with um, Creative Suite and a bunch of other things. Yeah. It's, a, it's a whole long yard, but yeah, for, right. for about five years I've been what one could call a, a more serious? Yes. Just a professional, professional, I guess one would say. So yeah, <laughs> around then. You're a professional once you start calling yourself a professional. Like, yep, I guess, I'm a professional. Yeah. I, I assume it's just like once I can make a living at it, right? Yes. Yeah. true. technically what that means. So on <laughs> yeah. my screen, I have your portfolio and I'm just going to scroll through it real quick so everyone can kind of get a load of what they're going to be experiencing, experiencing. today. <laughs> so you make really, really detailed and beautiful portraiture. That's, that's the intent, yes, yes, is to to make pretty and overly intricate things. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I um, I oh, think yeah. most people know me from my alternative uh, silkscreen prints that tend to be about films and TV and what have you. But I also do a fair amount of editorial illustration as mm -hmm. well as you know books and campaigns and and what have you. Yes. So very cool. Yeah. So we are kind of channeling your skills into creating illustrations for this conference. Yes. This fictional conference. Yes. Uh, what's the idea? What is the intent behind your project? Yeah, so it was it was kind of nerve-wracking coming up with an idea because, you know, without, like, the branding or the central, like, yeah. idea, I wasn't sure. So what we're going to do is kind of come up with this um, semi-Masonic emblem that we can Ooh. use on things. So um, I got to look at the, the, like, logo proposals we were using and figured that we could make something sort of, like, intricate and so what we have here is a muse of sorts based ah. on some Roman sculpture and we're gonna give her a little paintbrush there mm -hmm. and have her standing on I guess we'll see maybe we can take a, a vote as to what she should be standing on right. if it's a logo or mm -hmm. who knows right and then we're gonna get into some filigreed edging which is something you see on uh, my work a lot a lot right. of scroll work so I'm so interested to see depending how on how much we can cram into the next three days we'll yes. see what we can we can get done but that's that's the intent right so we'll be live until 3 p.m pacific time so we've got about an hour and a half with tracy if you have any questions please chat ask them we are ask we're them. here tracy's here she's captive i have she nowhere else to questions. go so we might as well yeah <laughs> So has Illustrator always been kind of your, your tool of choice? It has been. I think um, before I got into graphic design, I I was originally the recipient of a BFA, which as anyone who's in the art world knows how incredibly useful that degree is. <laughs> Same. <laughs> um, so I, I graduated in 2009, right after the recession. So even if I had had a useful degree, mm -hmm. I probably wouldn't be able to find a job right. at that time. So um, in that time, I was fiddling with 
Creative Suite and teaching myself how to use it. Mm -hmm. um, and so really once I was going through that suite of programs, it was Illustrator that kind of um, popped out at me because I was never really somebody who was painterly in style or in interest. It was really blocks of color mm -hmm. and you know, assemblage and, and, and that kind of thing that appealed. So right. being able to resize and you know move these things around was really appealing. And I had like many heart attacks thinking that if I didn't get the like the DPI right, that mm -hmm. like my illustration would be shot and I'd have to like go back. And so it's that's a nightmare. It's like a waking nightmare for me. Yes. So with vectors, that's mm -hmm. never a problem. So true. So yeah, I think I think it has always been Illustrator and will always be mainly Illustrator at this time. Yeah. Yeah, Kayla's like, I'm getting a BFA right now, sad face. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's it's great. Don't get me wrong. I learned a bunch of amazing things, yeah. met some great people, and it was it was a great skill set to have, but I I don't know how applicable it is in the real world unless you're going for like an MFA to like be a teacher and that kind of stuff. So I, I would be happy to be told that I'm wrong and find mm -hmm. out that the money I spent on this degree was actually not just, you know, thrown out the window. Yeah. But uh yeah, it's you just go into it knowing what you're getting, right? I assumed that I would be waitressing huh. while I made artwork. And mm -hmm. it turns out not. So silver lining, yeah, the world and things don't turn out the way you think they might. You rose above. That's yeah. awesome. Kyle T. Webster says, I love that your site reads Lover of Ham when it's oh, listed yes. on Google. Oh, yes. Is that like a Ponyo reference? So, no. <laughs> Actually, I mean, before Ponyo. Um. <laughs> I loved Ham before Ponyo did. <laughs> no, so... Um, you can probably do a quick search of it. I only like just recently decided to get rid of my um, ham-based logo that I had for several years up ham until now. Ham-based logo. Google search ham-based logo. Ham-based logo. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's. You'll see it. it's orange. It's got crossed ham with a brush and pen tool down the center. Huh. Um, yeah, it was. Because I, I clearly didn't take myself too seriously and was like, anyone who hires me is going to know that this is nonsense. Yeah. So, um, oh my gosh. Yeah, there we go. Oh, that that's delicious. It. If you yeah. pop over to my screen, you can see it looks like bacon. <laughs> yeah, it's bacon. Oh. And so, yeah, I had, a, I had a ham theme for many years. But why though? You just love it that much? I really do. Or is it just like your thing? So, okay, I am Hawaiian, Chinese, and Polish. And cool. If you know anything about Polish people, you know anything about Hawaiian people, they like pork. Yes, true. And so I am genetically predisposed <laughs> to liking pork products. And I take that very seriously. It's part of my um, heritage. It's part of my cultural heritage. <laughs> God, I'm offending so many people right now. <laughs> um, okay. But yeah, so that that was the plan because I didn't know how to brand myself I didn't know what I wanted to do or how I wanted people to see so I was just like mm -hmm. let's do something totally absurd yeah. and that's that's what we ended up doing for a while so yeah ham based and that's why it says lover of ham it's still true it's just not as as related to yeah. the, the now it's overall just your brand punchy now. tagline yes it doesn't yeah. have to be in your icon no. right? your icon's very serious and kind of iconoclast it's cool yeah well it's it's funny because like over time I've realized like I wanted a, a printer's mark of sorts, mm -hmm. you know, like Albrecht Durer had that amazing yes, little like A they. and D, mm -hmm. and so I really wanted something like that I could insert into illustrations, because as anyone who knows who makes digital art, it's really easy for people to rip off your stuff. Oh yeah. And so it's really fun to have an embedded mark inside the design, because it's harder to find, it's harder mm -hmm. to get rid of than, you know, anything else, and then I don't have to put a big watermark across my images. So, true. so then it's easier to just be like, well, this little printer's mark is built into the image, which means you definitely you like, stole that. ripped this image off. So <laughs> yeah, I, I had wanted a printer's mark for a couple of reasons for a long, long time. And then, yeah, I decided maybe I should take my logo a little bit more seriously than mm -hmm. just having it be ham based given that it didn't really work with the artwork that I'm doing. True, so like big true. bright orange ham and yeah. bacon next to like engraving style illustration. Right. It was a weird juxtaposition that didn't really make sense. No, I think the so. Durer like um, connection totally makes sense with your art style. Yeah, I I loved him for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. Still do, but um yeah it's I originally had a um, a print minor, um, so I graduated oh, cool. with a, a major in multimedia sculpture, All right. and then a, a minor in fine art printing, so I did intaglio printing and stuff like yeah. that, but the funny thing is I had never 
touched a silk screen until I was I had left university. Interesting. And so, yeah, what I eventually got into is in no way related to yeah. what I did in terms of you know my profession much later on. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, it's 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 interesting how the stuff you were always interested in kind of works its way into what you end up doing. Definitely. So. That's cool. I'm interested in what you're doing right now. It looks like you're outlining? Yeah, I'm pen tooling out the general shapes that I can mm-hmm. sort of just separate. Because um, as we start getting into the, the finer line work that I use to make those cross-hatching marks, I will need to clip things here and there. And so it's really important to have um, the pieces that I know that are going to need to be blocked out, just mm-hmm. blocked out to start with, rather than trying to go around later on. So now we're just taking the sort of like sketch that I came in with and separating it out into portions and then Mm -hmm. we'll get into line work and cross fingers that'll actually get into a decent amount of it so you can guys see how it works in the next hour and a half. You shall see. (laughs) We indeed will see how that works. Hour in, 20 minutes. (laughs) Yeah, I, this is very different from my own process but I also love print and printmaking. Like I feel like my style is very similar to that so I'm excited to see this but yeah. I'm mostly a photoshop oh print nice faker. so you do raster I do I've never had a problem with raster I kind of like a little bit of grittiness I think I think it's really just how your brain works right like how mm-hmm. you see things in your own head yep. and for me the the blocks made sense I mean it's photoshop is awesome mm-hmm. and it's amazing but for me it's terrifying and I want it to stay away from me until yeah. I'm done with my illustration and, and I can just textures. resize as needed yeah so, yeah definitely Dan says cross hatching is why I'm here <laughs> that is a good reason to be here Dan yeah. I will I'm going to attempt a I'm going to at least make a very serious attempt to show you as much as I can of how I um, get that cross hatching yeah Shelly Tracy's using Adobe Illustrator yes vector-based program where you are building out shapes at the moment. Yep. Taking this little piece of cloth we have here and just isolating that out because I know that that's where I want to start. Oh, cool. Yeah. So how did you get to this point? Did you draw on paper? Did you draw digitally? Do you so, use a reference image? Yes. So um, I use reference in a very serious way, um, <laughs> mostly um, because what I do largely involves likeness. And mm-hmm. I, totally. I'm i sure there are these amazing people out there that can just look at a face and then put it on paper. Mm-hmm. I'm, I am not that person. Yeah. So I need to see like the face at angles to get, mm-hmm. you know, the subtle nuances of the cheekbone right. So yeah, I, I heavily use reference um, for, for people yeah. largely. So yeah, for the... The statue we're working with today, I looked at a couple of, of Roman and Greek statues of muses mm-hmm. and of Hera and all that good stuff. Good old crazy Hera. To get that drapery. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, um, yeah. Where was I going with that? I started rambling. Oh, how did you get this <laughs> sketch? <laughs> <laughs> yes, how did I get that sketch? Wonderful. So um, it's digitally drawn. I very yeah. rarely work um, in analog. I actually have to make a concerted effort to mostly... Um, that's due to bad habit and um, okay. getting started. It's a bad habit. <laughs> uh-huh. Don't. If I could start a blog, it would be don't do it this way, how I got oh. to where I was. Um, <laughs> this so, only happens once and it happened to me. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't do it this way. I'll tell you what not to do. Um, so, yeah, the it would be so much faster, I think, if I worked analog. But since this has been part of my process for the last couple of years, this is just like how mm-hmm. it works now and yeah. so it would be awesome to go back and do a little bit more of it and I try to do as much analog as I can but it's it's generally just sketched or drawn in Illustrator and then I use that as a framework gotcha. um, in, in you know what is the word with my reference um, yeah. to continue to flip back and forth right so well yeah. I think since you use reference so heavily it might be better to just be all digital you don't have to even take that extra step of jumping from analog to digital I appreciate you trying to make it seem <laughs> like my bad habit is reasonable so um yeah it's it's an interesting thing to to try to sketch digitally I like I said it would go much faster if I if I didn't because um, then I get like I get overly precious yeah. about um, the lines that I'm making and I lose sort of the focus that it needs to be loose. So there's been more than one time where I've worked with a client and I've been meaning just to send like a rough sketch and I'm like, so here's that. this like 50% dead thing because I really just got <laughs> swept up in it. And mm-hmm. so it's, like I said, don't do not do what I 
Don't do what I do, kids. <laughs> do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> uh, Shelly has a great question. How many illustrators yeah. actually use Illustrator? Chat, what do you Ooh, think? Do you use Illustrator? I'm an illustrator, and I know how to use Illustrator, yeah. but... I don't use it so much, but I also start in analog and like paper and yeah. things like that. Do it that way. <laughs> Depending <laughs> on what you want as your end result. That's true. That's true. Depending on the usage. I'm just saying it's a bad habit not to keep the the drawing skills as, yes. as sharp, sharp. As, as the digital ones. Mm -hmm. um, but I have a feeling that I've allowed myself to get this way because I, you know, I didn't go to university for design. And so I... I taught myself how to use Creative Suite. Like, I worked at you know how I wanted to work, and eventually got where I am. And mm -hmm. so that enabled me to be really bad with my habits. Mm -hmm. No one ever checked me. And was just like, you you need to not be doing this. Right. You need to work on such and such a skill set. Like, mm -hmm. and what have you? No, no. I was spoiled, <laughs> and I got it to I got to do exactly what I wanted. And so, yeah, there gotcha. it is. And That's so to. I get this question a lot, so just to, to talk about it. These are the brushes we're gonna be using today. They are custom brushes. I don't know how well you can sort of see them, but mm -hmm. we've got a sort of mix of things that I use to make cross hatching. This is a pattern oh, brush okay. that I figured we could try out that I don't use, but I thought it might be fun if we have time. Cool. So we've got sort of uh, directional tapered edges mm -hmm. and then sort of just the the general one we use, which is sort of this like double tapered end. Um, nice. Because I haven't found that the Pressure works as well in Illustrator as it does in Photoshop for the right. Wacom tablet, which mm -hmm. is what I'm using to draw. Mm -hmm. And it, um, it's just easier for me to be able to just make these marks sort of like as I need to. Right. Um, and then you kind of just like fix how accurate you want them to be and within how many pixels. So yeah. we'll see if the little bit more curvature will work for us today. Cool. And Shelly wants to know, how did you make your custom brushes? Did you just fiddle around or did you know what you wanted? I knew what kind of... Um, lines I ultimately wanted to create um, and so I knew how I wanted those things to taper and mm -hmm. um, when you make the brushes I made the shape that I wanted sort of overall and then you could make them flexible so that they fit towards you know the line that you use and, and they end up being because they're vector mm -hmm. sort of resizing towards what you you need them to be so I knew the, specifically the two shapes that I wanted. And then I have a couple of extra that are sort of in the wings, but these like the, the tapered and then the really double tapered slim line are, are what I use for almost everything I do. People are saying that you have super villain hair. Thank you, yeah, it's literally <laughs> from a comic book. Um, oh, really? Yeah, I went to, I had really long hair for a really long time and then like short cropped bob mm -hmm. and then I am, um, oh my God, I'm totally blanking on the name of it. That's terrible. <laughs> It's okay, we'll come back to that. Yeah, but I, I showed the barber like the piece yeah. of like the, the hardcover and I'm like, I want this. Mm -hmm. Give me this hair. And so yeah. You did it. And then I saw somebody earlier that said I had super villain hair. Mm -hmm. You're damn right, because I want to be a villain. I do not you got, want like, to the be... high neck, the cowl, yes. everything. Yeah. It's my it's my Sith Lord. Oh my hoodie. gosh. Voodoo Val in the chat is about to <laughs> just go nuts. <laughs> You have a lot in common. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. So you don't want to be a good person? Is that what you're gonna say? <laughs> it, that's not necessarily what it is. I think it's it's much better to have the expectation that people think you're gonna be mischievous, and then you can sort of like throw them off and be really evil. Yeah. And then it's oh. just like, oh well, she just went back to her her, her natural nature, right? And uh, then, I see. Yeah. Then you get to be the the endearing villain. I don't, I don't know what I'm talking about. Don't Likeable. <laughs> Voodoo Val says, my soul sifter. Sifter. <laughs> That's excellent. I want that on a t-shirt. Yes. Like, now. That's awesome. Um, What's up, Shauna? By the way, oh, Sarah says that you have Elena hair from Saga. That is it. Is that it? Yeah. Nice, Sarah. That's it. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I used to have purple tinted hair. Hers is greenish, like blue. But yeah. I'm just like, yeah, I need her hair in my life. Make it happen. Yeah. I highly recommend Saga to anyone who likes comics. It's amazing. It's beautiful. It's amazing. Yeah. I can't believe I forgot the name of it. <laughs> you're you're under kind of a lot of pressure right now, so it's okay. <laughs> I'm so like, I'm like, I know I'm here and I'm here and I'm like trying to flip flop back and forth. Mm -hmm. So I used to be able to do this a lot better, the back and forth. Yeah. Well, no you're doing longer. great so far, I think. What do you think, chat? Tracy Hype? 
<laughs> some hype in the gym. <laughs> we do have a giveaway in about 10 minutes, so we do need some hype to get going. Yay, yes, um, distract them with free things. Yes, yeah, so we have different <laughs> gifts during this stream, different gifts during every stream, and since you are working in Illustrator, we have yes. Illustrator-themed oh, giveaway gift. So oh the pillow will be the first gift. Nice. Well, we could be giving this away mm. in 10 minutes. Oh, not this one, because I'm going to steal it. Right? I'm like, there's <laughs> that Photoshop over there, and I kind of really want it. Um, but all you have to do is be active in chat. So say something. If you haven't said anything yet, now is a good time to log into Behance and say hello. Let us know where you're from yes. and uh, what your favorite supervillain is. Yes. Let us know that. Yes. yes. And I will yes. judge you on your answer. <laughs> because she's also a villain. <laughs> See, I usually get the people think I'm a lot like darker and more evil than I am, and then they're surprised by me. Interesting. I'm like... I I don't know why you get that. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I mean, that's and that's not the worst thing though, because then you can sort of like surprise people mm -hmm. with how you end up you True. Know, doing certain things. Ooh, Amin is from Iran or Iran, uh, India, Minnesota. Awesome. Do do do. Up, Alaska. Guys? Mexico. Mm -hmm. Rob's favorite supervillain is Thanos. Is that from Thor? Well, it, yeah, it's, it's the Marvel Universe. Thank you. <laughs> What's up, Rob? Hello. <laughs> do you know Rob? I do. He, he, he's in my city, and it's oh, really of funny. Um, and you guys have similar Yeah, we're, a we're, bit. We're, 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 we're vector buds. Yeah. Um, funny story, though, is I didn't meet Rob until Adobe Max in mm -hmm. Vegas, and we live like 40 minutes away from That's crazy. So That happens, though. Does it though? <laughs> Maybe. Wait, were you there this year? Yeah. Oh, cool. and, and so that's the thing is I kept missing Rob at like Adobe Creative Jam in DC mm -hmm. and like all these different things like randomly throughout the city. We just like just miss each other. And then of course oh, I see man. him in Vegas. Yeah. So funny. Awesome. Funny how the world works. Huh? Small world and a big world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we have about 10 minutes left till that giveaway. Uh, and you're working on just adding kind of the, the wrinkles and the folds? Yeah, before we start working on that texture. Gotcha. And how do you decide that a line is good enough when you're doing this kind of organic shaping? Um, so normally I get to spend a lot more time on like fleshing them out, but I'm like freaking out and rushing. So mm -hmm. um, <laughs> normally it's, it's flipping back and forth between um, more references mm -hmm. and just checking, you know, you know, how deep does that shadow need to be to the left and the right? But now we're kind of just ad-libbing in the, in the interest of showing you guys as much as I can mm -hmm. in the time that we have. So, yeah, normally it's it's a lot of play, which is why um, Vector works for me really well because ah. it's it's easier to, like, group things and hide them for a while and yeah. then maybe see if, you know, this cluster works better. And then if it doesn't, then I wipe it out and I bring it back and, mm -hmm. and then, you know, shift and resize and, and stuff like that. So yeah. it's a little bit more play depending on... Um, what I have and what I'm doing at the moment. Because sometimes stuff is really clear cut, but since this is sort of just a little more loose, it requires a little less, um, a little less of being like something and a little right. more just how I think it should look. Yeah, just is, believable. That's the hope and the plan. Mm -hmm. We'll see if we get there. And then we'll just start in. Anyone who's here for the line work, I promise we're gonna get to that cross hatching in a sec. I just wanna give myself some landmarks to work off of as we're working on that, uh, the depth and the lighting. Yeah, so totally. Bear with me. Krista was wondering uh, what we're working on right now. So this week, Adobe Live's focusing on Creative Campaign, which is a bunch of awesome designers and artists from around the creative landscape are here designing a fictional creative conference. So there's the brief on the screen. Market a new conference for creative people. The core value is create and share. Yes. So we had James earlier this morning and Christine, Jessica, and we're finishing out the day with Tracy. We're here mm -hmm. uh, Tuesday through Thursday, and we will be done in about an hour in five minutes. So oh, if Lord. you're just tuning in <laughs> today, make sure that you come back tomorrow and the next day and hang out. Yeah. Uh, we have giveaways, contests every day. The theme changes every day. And hopefully we'll have a totally finished conference by the end of the third day. For everyone except me. <laughs> For everyone except you. I don't know why, but that's just how it's going to be. <sighs> Ooh, Madis likes Harley Quinn. That's 
his favorite. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. I'm interested in what interpretation they yeah. prefer. Because we've had some, some recent remakes of that character, mm -hmm. so. True. Steve likes the dark helmet from Spaceballs. Nice. Excellent. Yes. <laughs> See, Excellent. perfect. Where comedic relief, definitely mm -hmm. not a good guy, but you know, could surprise you with yeah. whether or not he wants to be funny or <laughs> or evil, dastardly in that moment. So yes. I dig it. All right. Do you play any video games? When I had free time. Yes. Um many moons ago. Many um moons. I liked playing Pixel Junk Eden a lot. Pixel Junk Eden. Yes. Um that, it should tell you how long ago I was playing video games okay. from me saying it was Pixel Junk Eden. Um, but it's gorgeous, the music's great, and it was just, you know, you take a little guy and you like hop around and you swing and you collect things. Oh, cool. Yeah, it's really, really pretty. Kind of um, looks like Limbo. Simple. Yeah. Um, well, I asked because someone in chat just said that you looked like a Tracer from Overwatch, which I can totally see. Oh. Pretty I BA. I can see that. Mm -hmm. I can't get my hair to stand up like that, though. You can't? Not mm -hmm. even on a good day. No, <laughs> it doesn't. Like I would have to use like the like the Elmer's glue yeah. way of things Actually. to get it to be <laughs> like that. It's the it's the Chinese heritage. The, uh, the hair is thick and wants to lay flat. Yes, it wants looks very super villainy though. Always be flat. <laughs> Bangs are good. I like them. Yeah. All right, so we got this dark shape, and we'll go with that. So we're gonna go. I'm gonna say one copy with this, but. And we'll do two, depending on how you And so anyone will kind of notice when they look at the work, I tend to work in a limited palette. Mm -hmm. So um, I automatically break things up into a number of colors. So when I start, I know that there's going to be a dark trap color, which speaks to my silk screen sort of background. Okay. So the pink right now is going to be my, my darkest trap color, and then we're going to work in, I think, a second one. And then there will be the the white of the paper, whatever background um, color we end up going, which which is why I have this sort of like random little doodad shape over here, because that'll be the start of our second color, so I can start showing you some of the, uh, the cross hatching we're gonna get into. Perfect, and Laura, this was drawn 100% in Illustrator. Yes. It was not sketched out on paper yeah. beforehand. Yes. And we will be looking at submissions after we do the giveaway in a couple minutes. So I have them all pulled up. If you submitted too late in the last stream, we will look at them now. And you have about 30 minutes to get your submissions in. We're asking you all to make the badges that the attendees would wear at this conference. Uh, go to the contest tab at be.net slash live and all the info is there for you. So for anyone who ever wants to do engraving and doesn't do it, um, hand-drawn, because hand-drawn is the way to do it. But if you do it digitally, mm -hmm. blend tool. Ooh. Blend tool. Okay, how do that you is. use it? So um, typically what I will do is I just, um, I select my, my anchor strokes. So when I want to create sort of, let's see where there's a good section where I can show you. So for now, I'll just say that I know what I want for this section. So we're going to take my custom thing. So I know I want a deep taper there so the shadow will be picked up. Mm -hmm. And so what we'll do is we'll just create some anchor shapes. Oh, I anchor, see what you're gonna do. Anchor strokes. And then... Wait, how did you just do that? What was that? What? <laughs> where, you, where you added all those. So that's that's the blend tool. So oh, so you already the, have it set. It's, yeah, it's um, option command B for blend. Mm -hmm. um, and then sort of select how, how deep I need that. Um, gotcha. That might be. Yes. And so, um, let's see. And then, since there's no real erase um, for these brushes, and, and I'm maybe there is one for um, Illustrator that I just don't know about. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, specifically for my work, I work in positive and negative shapes. So let's say I wanted these lines to sort of. Um, have a, like, I need them to not be super solid to give them the, the sort of effect of being lighter, mm -hmm. right? So, you are not welcome here. Get mm. out of here. Be gone. Um, be gone, sir. <laughs> um, and so what I do is I work with positive and negative lines to create that sort of cross-hatching effect. Wow. So blend over blend. And so that's where layers sort of come into to play and why um, clipping becomes a major factor. Because since I'm not actually erasing 
the actual yeah. lines, mm -hmm. they need to sort of overlay one on top of another over time. Yes. And so uh, this is great because instead of, I don't know if anyone who ever worked with it in raster, if you get rid of something, like you can't just magically bring it back unless no. you save that layer. You For this it. one, it's gone. <laughs> I really like doing it this way specifically because let's say I got the contour of this line wrong, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. I can change that contour line and I don't have to change anything else because my my positive overlay is the same and the bottom is the same. I just changed the way that that curve works. Um, so that is literally all there is to how I do what I do, except it's yeah. just a lot of it. A just lot a of massive, it. massive layering of this positive and negative, positive and negative. I've over always and over wondered again. how people like got this effect in Illustrator, and now I know, and I'm it's, so powerful now. It's blend for me. I'm fairly certain it's blend for most. And then, yeah, when it comes to engraving styles, it's really, if you're not doing it analog where you're actually sketching out all those like lovely little stippling mm -hmm. um, lines, I think this tends to be the, the easier way, at least that's what I've found. Yeah, um, totally. So you can leave now. That's that's the secret. Hi. <laughs> You're gonna be here alone. All turn the lights done. Off. <laughs> and we are finished. So yeah, that's that's really it. That's literally all there is. Is I'm going to be doing that over and over and over and over again for different mm -hmm. sections, and then it's just from then on editing, deciding how much of that you want here versus right. not. So we're just gonna be doing that. See, uh, Ash has a good question for you. What's do you have up? any advice for an Illustrator noob? Someone totally new to Illustrator. How do they jump in? Um, that is an interesting question. Um, I got started by just literally pen tooling out objects. So like I drew Priuses nice. to start. Like just, <laughs> just as sort of like, here's a shape. Let's draw that shape and figure out how to render it, right? Mm -hmm. And so it was a lot of passion projects for a long time um, just to kind of teach myself what there was. And then when I couldn't figure out how to render it, I would go online and say, like, type in, like, create blank and blank effect. And then I'd watch, you know, the YouTube videos mm -hmm. and the tutorials that existed for those. And so um, with anything, it's just practice, 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 practice. Yep. Um, endless, endless amounts of practice. So, um it's not a great, or it's not, well, it's not that it's not a great answer, but right. it's it's an answer that people might not want to hear, but it's really just, just work at it, just play with it, and um, keep trying to discover some things. But uh, Skillshare is awesome if you're looking True. for stuff, specifically if you're looking for Vector. Um, DKNG has some really great um, tips and tricks videos on Skillshare that are a lot awesome. of fun if you're starting out. Um, mm -hmm. So check that out. Yeah, that's great. I think that's the answer to a lot of creative questions is you just got to start gotta do it. doing it. No good answer, but it yeah. is helpful to find things that you are passionate about. Like, I really want to make an image of this or like, this is what I want. Mm -hmm. So you kind of have a goal yes. uh, and some passion that goes behind it. And we are at our giveaway time. So we're going to be announcing a random winner of the giveaway. We're giving away this beautiful Adobe Illustrator yeah. pillow. Just like the little icon that you have down on your dock. Mm -hmm. So lovely. So uh, all you have to do is be active in chat and we will announce the winner in just one moment. Are you all excited? It's very soft. Mm. It's overstuffed Spishy. and I like it. Like, look at that. Look at that little guy. <laughs> nice cross section. <laughs> awesome. There the chat view. goes. Yes, it is a real object. All right, it looks like we have a winner. Yay. Hooray. Would you like to read the name? I do. Jeff Gabriel, congratulations on your awesome pillow. Congrats, Jeff. You have one free pillow. Awesome Stick around for the next 30 minutes because we will have another giveaway. And then right before we leave at three, we're gonna be announcing the winner of the contest. So click on the challenge tab, not contest. Tim, thanks for letting me know. <laughs> um, challenge tab to get more info on how to submit, but we want you to create the badges for the conference. So we are working on developing a creative conference. It's fictional, but it would be amazing if it was real. So this is kind of the illustrative element to the design. Yeah, we are getting there. <laughs> it's happening right before <laughs> our very eyes. Yeah. No, some of those badge um, ones that I saw from the last stream were awesome. Right, yes. Keep up the good work, guys. I'll show some of them so we can get through a couple, because there's a lot um, while you're working on that. So I have one by Jesse Robinson. So this is an updated um, 
project you submitted during Christine's, which, so this is awesome. A nice update. That's not, that's not how it goes. Close. <laughs> I know that's not how it goes. But. Nice. This is by Bruna DE Tools Conference. Ooh. Oh, nice. Yeah. Mixes some photography, graphic mm. design. This is by Jeanette. Anonymous Star Conference. Ooh. Do you know Anonymous where you are? Star Do you know what you mean? To the rest of the scene? Don't know how important you are, you beautiful anonymous star. That's so poetic. Poetry. Mm-hmm. Nice job, Jeanette. Mm -hmm. We've got Design Me Up with designer Johnny Lamas. Attendee. Three-day pass. I really like the colors in this one. Ooh, yeah, I like Cute. that. Nice job. I will use that later when I'm sorting through my colors. Mm -hmm. We've got a dog attendee. This is Lucy Fur, the pup. Conferences would be better if there were more dogs. Agreed. I think everything <laughs> would be better. If there were more dogs. If I could bring my dog anywhere, <laughs> that'd be great. All right, this is by the Simple Designers, and this is the Designer to Designer Conference. Ooh, fun. Really cute. I like it. I like how you used your icon. Like if everybody got an illust illustrated yeah. <laughs> illustrated icon, that'd be amazing. Looks like ice cream. Mm-hmm. Like Melting. Ice cream. This is a nice two iterations of a badge for the creative conference for Marie and Shireen. Whoa. Oh, that's so Sam, I remember your submission from earlier, so this is a really cool other uh, second submission. Really Super psychedelic. Yeah. If everybody got that. I'd go just for the badge. Right? If there was like some filter or they just like took your photo mm -hmm. and turned it into that. Yeah. You just leave after the conference. Bye. And you're like, I got what I needed. Thanks. Bye. And they're like, thanks for the $1,600. <laughs> <laughs> Worth All it. All right. This is by Hafid. This is a conference called Brain Poop. <laughs> I like that. I've never seen anything like this. <laughs> Healthy, fresh, relaxing collaboration. Oh my God. Yes. I need Feed. to know where that conference is. Okay, come on now. You've done it. This is so weird. It's so teeny. I'm so used to working on my iMac. I'm so spoiled. <laughs> it's good. Just like a massive screen. This one is, uh, looks like it's by one. Yeah, really cool geometric, that. just black and white. Nice job. It's by Paul. Ooh, I like the blend. Ooh, nice. Blend Sharing tools is, where it's at. Mm -hmm. Sharing is caring conference. Really nice. Good designer to designer. Tiny, little teeny tiny arrows. Too small. I'm so spoiled. I'm like, ugh, oh, it's too tiny, I can't see. This is a pass for you, Tracy. Your VIP. Nice. Michelle is just staff. <laughs> Not a VIP. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but I don't even get to go, so at least you get to go, Michael. <laughs> Alrighty. So it's by Massa Mil Miliano. Wow, oh what a God. name. Come on now. Nice colors. Work with a lady here. And finally, our last submission for right now. Oh did I just something? Super awesome, guys. We will pick okay. a winner in about 30 minutes. So Yay. stick around for that. But thank you so much for sharing and keep getting your contest submissions in. Or at least pop back over to your screen so we can know what you're having trouble with. Yeah, I, like it's mostly just me being a granny and being like, why aren't you doing what I want, you gosh darn machine? Burr. Yeah, it's. I'm so spoiled, and normally I'm just like this huge like screen in front of me, and I'm mm -hmm. just like, oh, you're so tiny, and I can't see you. So it's my own fault being so very spoiled. <laughs> uh, chat, I want to know what kind of workspaces you have. I know some of you have like four desktops and like three keyboards because you have three yeah. arms. Like, what's going on? Yeah, some of those workspaces out there are awesome. Mm -hmm. I usually just work a little MacBook, a little tablet. Yeah. Sometimes I'll use my Yanova, which is like an off-brand Cintiq, but other than that, pretty simple. Yeah, I got, so it's funny, I definitely got like new equipment like this year. Oh, um, nice. And there, there's an impetus to it. Um, I did an interview with um, Wacom and Jack Woodhams, shout out Jack. Um, oh, and they they wanted like photos of your workspace in addition to like the interview right and so yeah. like, I showed them a workspace and they saw my my tablet and no joke the thing is like eight years old it was yeah. a, a dinosaur and um, so I did the interview and it went up and then like two weeks later Wacom tweeted like 
Tracy Ching uses such and such of like a model. Show us your dinosaurs. Ooh. That was like shade wake up. Wow, so I got like fired. Twitter shamed into getting a new like piece of equipment because they should have given you one. They're wake up. Yeah. <laughs> I, I get it. I get it. And it it's it's old. I'm not saying it wasn't justified, but yes. I was like, okay, clearly mm-hmm. I need to get one now because I just got publicly shamed by Wake Up for how old my piece of machine is. I get <laughs> the it. Company. I get it. I do. I'm on board, man. I but just... did it work? Like did you need to update? Yes, I did. Oh, okay. it, it was I had already been considering it for a while. It was just like we were getting ready to move and I didn't want to get a new one until we had moved. Right. And so I'm like, great, I get to show like my temporary workspace on like this interview for for Wacom. Thanks so much, Wacom. (laughs) No, thank you, Wacom. I appreciate (laughs) the the shout out. Um, But yeah, it was sort of like this thing where I thought maybe it would like go under the radar. Mm -hmm. Mm -mm. Nope, nope. No, it didn't. It really, it really didn't. I understand it. I understand it, but yeah, looking at like other people's setups, they're like these amazing, like gorgeous rooms with all this light and yeah. these like huge desks and multiple mm-hmm. monitors. And I'm like, dang, I gotta up my game. I work in a shed in my backyard, so <laughs> there's no electricity. I just have to go inside when the sun goes down. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I worked in the corner of my living room in my apartment because mm-hmm. there was nowhere else I could go. I have, yeah. I've got three kids at home. <gasps> And so it was like the Fun. it was the only space not occupied by children and children's yeah. things full time because wow. there was more than once that like my two year old would be like crawling on my lap while I'm trying to get this thing done. Yeah, you're like please. I was just like mommy needs to work now. Oh Thank man. You. So are so. any of them creative and artsy like you? Not yet. Well, um, my eldest is turning three, and I just had twins in February. What? Congratulations. Which is why I couldn't be here last February for that screen. Michael and I had worked on it for a while, mm-hmm. and I, I think it was like, I was foolishly considering coming because mm-hmm. it sounded so awesome to be here with you guys, oh. but it was like 30 days before my due date. Or, sorry, it was it was two months before my due date, and I'm like, I can't. I can't risk going into labor. Nope. Uh, like across the country, <laughs> let alone live. live. Um, you guys could have helped me name my kids, I guess. Um, but and it turned out to work out because I I went into labor that weekend that I was supposed to be. Here. No. So yeah. Um, so yeah, the kids what? are my my eldest does love to draw. Cute. And she knows what I do at work. So when mm-hmm. I talked to her earlier today, she's like, "Mama at work, Mama draw." I was like, "Mama's gonna draw. Hopefully something." Like <laughs> she doing it in in the time allotted, mm-hmm. rather than just this one little tiny tuft of <laughs> stuff that I got going on here. It's something. Um, so. Oh, Jacy wants to know what your twins are named. Um, Finnegan and Oliver. So Finn and Ollie. So cute. Finn and Ollie. So like Irish. Yeah, my husband is Irish. Oh, there you go. Yeah, <laughs> and so they've got um, Irish first names and Hawaiian middle names. Oh. And then cool. yeah, my my eldest has a, a Hawaiian first name mm-hmm. and a, an Irish middle name. Well, what is it? Uh, her first name is Leilani. Leilani, I love and that. And then um, Leela for short. Mm-hmm. Hi, Leela. They're watching at home. Hey. Hi, <laughs> you, girl. Heard you like to draw. Up, girl. Keep drawing. Leela, draw. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, yeah, uh, I'm ashamed to say that I still don't have the pronunciation for the boys' middle names down pat without oh. looking at it because they're long. So my middle name is Kaleo Nahi Nahi Okalani and then Victoria. Whoa. Theirs are longer than mine. So <laughs> we're still a year in, and I think I can give myself some slack for not having that committed to memory just yet. Yes, but, um, until they know it, you don't have to know it. Yeah, I figure <laughs> I have until they go to school. Mm-hmm. Like, I have to start filling out forms and explain to them why I've done this to my children. <laughs> <laughs> well, you see. Yeah. That's awesome. Chat, if, if she had had her twinsies on stream, <laughs> what would we have named them? Let us know. I'm guessing, like... Pen tool and Bezier. His name would be Vector. Vector and Bezier. <laughs> Vector Bezier. Oh my God! <laughs> Why good. did I not think of that? That's like a amazing. Superhero name, I think. Vector Bezier. Ooh, Tim says Claude. <laughs> Creative Claude. <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> oh, puns. Puns all day. Yes, keep them coming, Tim. Twin one, twin two. Mm -hmm. Nice. Nice. Mm -hmm. Keep them coming. I want to know. <laughs> Uh, chat, we've got 15 minutes until we need to have your submissions in and make sure you get them in within that time period because this is the last stream of the day, which is crazy because okay. the day has gone by so quickly. Yeah. Uh, so get those batches in and then tomorrow the theme will be totally different. So come by at around 9 a.m., maybe a little earlier to find out what the new challenge is for tomorrow. Ooh, vector mm -hmm. and Pixel. Pixel. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a dog name. It sounds like a dog or a cat, right? Like yeah. It's, it's a really good a name, but I don't know if I need it for my children mm -hmm. necessarily. <laughs> I guess we'll see. Sorry, kids, you're being renamed. It's happening. <laughs> Your name is now Vector Bezier. <laughs> Whoa. It can be a superhero name or a Amazing. super villain name. No judgment, his choice. True, true. And decide if he is on the dark side or the light side. <laughs> yeah, just be chaotic evil. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I don't know what I am. Lawful good or mm -hmm. chaotic good? Yeah. What's the middle ground? Just good. I'm not I never sure. looked farther than <laughs> in one or two ways. Right. And you're what are you? Chaotic evil? I don't know. I haven't. I think it's dangerous to self-assign, right? Ooh. Because then it's sort of like... True. That's rarely what you actually are. Exactly. Self-perception versus... Mm. What do you think, chat? Okay, neutral good. Yes, that's the other option. There you go. Chaotic neutral. Ooh. Hmm. Interesting. So when you're looking at this, are you just building these shapes? Is it defined by how the folds are? Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, so it's... It's sort of trying to adhere to the contours, right? And mm -hmm. so we have like, you know, a little bit more depth there. So we mm -hmm. want it to sort of um, increase that blend towards the edge there. And then over time, once you add enough, it'll sort of end up completing the illusion of depth, one hopes, um, over time with enough layering. And so mostly that's it is just layering all of the layering all of the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, someone was wondering how long does it take you to finish a project? Forever. Um, no, <laughs> it's it really depends. Um, and that's sort of where um, things come back and forth. So if it's something likeness related, it's a little different when I'm tackling just, you know, angular objects mm -hmm. because the, the transitions make a lot more sort of like black and white sense, right? There isn't as much nuance, so right. there's not as much that's required um, to to sort of give that effect. Um, but most, like, posters that I do, um, a minimum time would be three days. It's more wow. like these seven in a rush. Um, the really good stuff, like, the stuff I like to work on that I spend a lot of time on, mm -hmm. the really, really, really complex stuff takes, like, three weeks. Wow, of um, working all day every day, or are you kind of working on multiple things? And so that is <laughs> the weird sort of thing. Um, I full-time parent, and then I work this job, and so yeah. I take care of my kids during the day, and then I do this like anytime they're not awake. <laughs> and so uh, it's not full day every day. If I had eight hours to work every day, oh my goodness, I can't even imagine the productivity that would, that would ensue from that. So most days, I think I'm lucky if I get like four to six hours to work. That's still a lot. And so, like, that's all your free time, it seems. Into sleep time. I don't sleep. If anyone's oh, wondering, that's like, the answer. yeah, how parenting and free time freelance works, um, no life, no sleep. Right. I heard you don't sleep anyways when you're a parent. Yeah. So. That's true. That's true. Mm, man, I am even more impressed now. That's crazy. Yeah. So, do you find yourself having to say no? To projects because you're like I got too much on my plate right now. Um, I think mostly just like the the ability to fit stuff in, but I mm -hmm. think um, to be quite honest, not much has changed in how I like approach the work because I had I had made sure that before I had had kids, I was comfortable where I was professionally. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I was full time freelance because I knew I wanted to be able to take care of my kids. Right. Um, because. Anyone who lives, I guess, in this nation, but in DC in particular, childcare is exorbitant. Oof. Um, so yeah, I 
I knew I wanted to do that. And then I ended up um, making sure that part of my life was completed before <laughs> um, I ended up having kids. And so not much has changed because I made sure that things were sort of tailored before I got here, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah, so that's smart. Yeah, that's, that's the deal. Gotcha. That's cool that you had that kind of plan for yourself and you got to achieve it. That's kind of what's required yeah. these days yeah. to, to be a parent. I want to like have a job, I think, to, to most cases. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm sure if I lived somewhere else, it might be a little bit easier. If I moved to like somewhere like Sweden or <laughs> something <laughs> like that. Right. They have, you know, mandatory, not mandatory, but like you can take a year off mm -hmm. and whatever. It's yeah. awesome. Maybe we'll get there one day, but until then, no sleep for me. No sleep for you or no soup. No sleep for me. Yeah, Voodoo Val, we've got another giveaway in 10 minutes. I feel like we just did a giveaway, which is incredible. So the next giveaway, it's not the pillow. I already gave it away. It's already gone. It's Jeff's. Uh, we have a Jeff. illustrator lapel pin. <gasps> Boop. Fun. Boop. Boop. <laughs> Put it wherever you want, wherever you want. And then where is it? We are also giving away the Adobe charger. So the lapel pin and the charger, all for you. I all love the you. illustrator kind of theme going on, giving some illustrator love. Yes. So be active in chat, the and then we will use some Adobe magic to pick a random winner. Fun. 10 minutes. 10 minutes. Yeah, Hector, so much Adobe swag. We've got even more. You don't even know. You don't even know. Mm -hmm. You have to stick around to find out. Yes. Love it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hafiz says, we should call her Crazy. Why? <laughs> What's because the joke? I'm crazy? Oh, crazy Crazy. <laughs> I see. <laughs> puns all day. Uh, I like puns as much as the next girl. Mm -hmm. I like this. Looks like money, kind of. Yeah. Is it supposed to? Is that the intent? Um, I think that's sort of the natural inclination when you get into like engraving. Yeah. And then because it's green, that sort of uh, makes it. Mm -hmm. even. But um, I saw some of the logos that we were fiddling with earlier had oh, some right, that, right, uh, right. green and mm -hmm. well, not not so much green, but we had a little bit of a theme going. So yes. I figured I would. I would introduce some color, make it a little more fun. Because um, I work global colors is where it's at. Um, mm -hmm. Because I often, um, I tend not to lock down the uh, color palette for sure until the very end. Wow. Um, I know how many colors I'm gonna use. I don't always know which colors. So I will, as you guys saw when I started, um, I started in grayscale. And then as sort of things go on, I will, mm -hmm. you know, try out new shades. And then once everything's finished and I can sort of work with what the final contrast is gonna look like once all of the line work is together, because yeah, sometimes that yellow is way too strong for, you know, that amount of whatever. So right. um, yeah, global colors we're working with right here. We got the three, I'll put that in a little group so you can see it isolated. So we got the white of the paper, we got this shadow color, and then we've got the, the black color mm -hmm. on that top trap. So yeah, that's what we're doing. We awesome. are fiddling with colors. Yeah, I like that. And but, I wanted to, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. I was gonna ask you about this crazy colorful project you have on your portfolio. Yes. Thor Ragnarok. Thor. I see it's completely foiled and like holographic rainbowness. Yeah, so. It's um, a story. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. Um, I work with a couple of galleries. Um, one that's here in San Francisco, Ooh, Spoke Art. You represent. should go there. They are awesome. <laughs> um, and then uh, Hero Complex in LA, who um, I worked with for this project. They had a, a licensed Thor show. Mm, cool. And so they, you know, they asked, like, do you want to submit something for the show? And it was a really incredibly difficult, um, like time for for us personally in our house because we were we were buying a house we had the three kids I was still trying to shut down all of my jobs and time so that we could make this move yeah but I wasn't gonna say no not to Thor to Thor so <laughs> no sleep for a weekend I submitted the the rough sketch to them and it got approved by Marvel and then start to finish it was like three days whoa and so that's why like 
the composition is not particularly dynamic. It's literally just Thor. Mm -hmm. And so the, the idea was to always, always, always was to print it on the holographic foil, which is what you see, you know, around the edges. Yeah. It's this really like sparkly, amazing, shiny paper to sort of reference the rainbow bridge, um, mm -hmm. you know, in the films and, and in the comic book. And so, um, finished, I got approved, and we printed it. And this is actually the image of the, like, the final design. Mm -hmm. And so it's, the color, like, right. was, oh, like, transparent enough that you could see the holographic foil through oh, the, the inks. Yeah. So it was this beautiful, beautiful thing um, wow. that I was really happy with, despite the fact that I did not get to spend the time I wanted on it at all. Oh. Um, but then it was it was really funny. Um, Fandango picked it up to use as their um, like giveaway if you bought tickets through them right. for like the opening. Mm -hmm. And so this image that ended up being the biggest and like had the most legs on it of the year was something that I didn't get to spend nearly amount like as much time as yeah. I wanted to. And so like it was this great and horrible thing. That I was just totally like, out of your control. <laughs> yeah, because like it's this thing that I didn't get to spend as much time on as I wanted, and it's that question versus good versus good enough, right? So like, True. I had only so much time, I could only do so much, and I did it, and then it got like, got blown so far out of proportion. It was everywhere, and I'm like, that's great, but it's also just like, it hurts my soul. Yeah. Because I'm like, I, it's. It's that project, right? That you want to do better and you just, you can't for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. And so you have to live with it. And so now it's on the internet and I have to live with it. Well, I think it's great. But I think chat does too. It was, it was <laughs> a lot of fun to work on and not so bad staring at Chris Hemsworth for a weekend. There so. he is. He was staring at you, that's for sure. In a very intense and somewhat intimidating way, so yes. Somewhat. <laughs> but, um... Just actual lightning coming out of his eyes, no big deal. Yeah, and and what furthermore is just ridiculous is like, so I'm a parent of three kids and I still haven't seen Thor. Me neither. Because <laughs> I don't get to go see movies. Oh no. <laughs> so Fandango was selling the image and yeah. it was everywhere and I still hadn't seen the movie yet. I'm oh like, man. It's unfair, man. It's a bummer. But yeah, life is... A weird old bird, man. <laughs> That's funny. We were saying that same phrase in the earlier stream. Were you really? Yes. That's amazing. I didn't even realize. I like haven't heard that in so long until today. I literally thought it was just me that said it. I thought it was like a nonsense saying. I'm so excited oh, that it you wasn't and just Christine. Me. It's the thing. It's a thing. The thing. So it's chat. So exciting. We got three minutes to get your contest submissions in. We'll also be doing the giveaway. And um, after we, well, well, we'll do the giveaway first, and then we'll look at some submissions. How about that? Fun, fun, fun. Sounds good to me. Ash says that he hasn't been able to see Thor 3 either. Good. But you have a better excuse than they have. <laughs> <laughs> All excuses be. are good if they're delivered in the right way. <laughs> if you lie. <laughs> <laughs> yes, if you lie. It's, it all makes sense. Mm. Let's bring this guy back to where he was. Cleo says, I'm all about that illustrator life. <laughs> That's awesome, Cleo. Who else? Who else is all about that illustrator? That AI. Uh, Caitlin says, yeah, working at home, momming. I have four under seven. <gasps> Go you. Mm -hmm. Dang, son. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah, I thought it was going to be easy, right? We're like, you know, we, wa we wanted, you know, two kids, right? Like, like, we're like, let's have our second. You know, our, our eldest will be two when they're born. Yeah. And the universe is just like, ha, three. <laughs> How about three, though? <laughs> Try three on for size. <laughs> Jokes on you, productivity. Yeah. Three children. Boom. Man, what a challenge. Yeah. Yes. They're awesome. I'm but, sure. But it's they sound awesome. As with all parenting, it's it's trying. Mm -hmm. It's trying. Yes. Uh, Rob, you're totally right. Get those submissions in. We have one minute because if you don't get it in now, then we won't be able to look at it ever. <laughs> Although you will have a nice portfolio piece. It's so true. get those in. The theme is going to be totally different tomorrow, and we'll look at them. In a couple minutes, Simon says Adobe Live on Behance is pretty cool. I'm glad you think so, Simon. It is pretty cool. Thanks for being here. And let us know if you are uh, first time here. Feel free to chat if you haven't chatted before. All you have to do is sign in with your Adobe ID or your Behance account. Why are you being difficult? 
frustrator. How could you? You're not doing what I want you to do. Stop it. Ooh, hmm. Paul, will there be an animation challenge this week, you know? <gasps> there could be. Ooh. You'll just have to come back and find out. We do have one animator. Maybe. Maybe that'll happen. He's awesome. <laughs> I was checking out his work earlier. Yeah, everybody this week is very talented and it's an awesome okay. team to come together to build this creative conference. Yes, Voodoo Val, let's get some hype for the giveaway. Say something in chat if you haven't already. That's the way that you enter and you could be the winner of this Adobe Illustrator lapel pin and an Adobe branded charger. Where does it say Adobe? Ooh. Very cool. I could use one of those. Although I was saying earlier that I always forget to charge the charger, so then it's just like <laughs> a literal brick. I have the same one. It's just taking up space. Yep. And, uh, it's just like, great, you don't have a purpose. I bring it to like uh, Comic Cons mm -hmm. to like charge my phone because I use Square Up when I'm there. And oh, it's just nice. like, yeah, that's funny that I brought this tool that's or thought nothing. I was bringing this tool. And uh, yeah, they were not. Oh no, oh we have a winner. Voodoo Val says the winner is Gabriella Yanez. Yay! Congratulations, Congratulations Gabriella. So you got the lapel pen and the charger. Adobe Live Team or someone will be in touch with you uh, in your Behance messages. So look out for that. We've been giving away lots of cool different swag. We've got the Illustrator pillow. We gave away Photoshop stuff earlier in a big bag, Squishy. which was awesome. It was like a big bowling gym bag. Ooh, neat. We also have Adobe XD socks. Mm. So make sure you're coming back for all the different segments. You have a chance to win and get those submissions in. I think the submission deadline already happened, so we'll look at those in a minute. It's exciting. Hmm, Shelly wants to know, which Comic Cons do you go to? I do Awesome Con because that's the one in DC that I just oh, like cool. roll out of bed and hop on the metro to get to. Yeah. Um, I like that one a lot. Um, I'll be at Baltimore Comic Con this year, Ooh. and then I typically have um, like print releases through my galleries for um, New York Comic Con and San Diego. Gotcha. So. so when you say through your galleries, what do you mean? Um, so they will typically have tables or booths um, at various cons, mm -hmm. um, and they sell prints. So gotcha. sometimes they're licensed, sometimes they're just alternative movie posters, sometimes they're art prints, mm -hmm. it, it sort of depends on, on what you and the gallery come up with um, for that, that particular event. Gotcha. Yeah. And you get uh, just a cut of the sale? Mm -hmm. nice. Yeah, so with most galleries, um, they will take a percentage, you take a percentage, and then you sort of decide who's going to take care of production. Um, if you do prints like I do, if you paint, then production is sort of just built into your time spent. Um, but yeah. Nice. And mm -hmm. am I correct in thinking that you have representation for your work? I do, yeah. So I work with Debut Gallery. They are they have offices in a couple of places, but they're mm -hmm. headquartered out in London. Ooh, very yeah. posh. And how did you go about doing that? And was that something that you always intended? So yeah. it's, it's, again, do not do what I do. It's It makes no sense how I got here. Mm -hmm. um, so I had like this mini solo show in 2014 in... Um, in Chicago and I was sort of just putting together like a press release to send to people I thought that might be interested in covering it so you know slash film and a couple of other things like I would send out and so I mistook my agency for like an art aggregation website well and it does so, say gallery right no it's it's debut art debut so art debut art okay <laughs> and so I like I sent them one, and they're like, so we don't really do this, but your art's really great. Would you consider representation? And you're like... And I'm like, what just happened? <laughs> like, so... You fell face first into that. <laughs> yes, and and that's that's how that happened. So I, I had, up until then, thought about it, but I hadn't thought I was well-established enough in my career to like, seek out representation at that time, because, mm -hmm. again, it was... 2014 and I was still trying to get a leg up um, yeah. so I, it wasn't something I was actively chasing down it's just something that I fell into quite right. literally right um, so but they've been amazing to work with I'm really excited and um, yeah if you're freelance um, especially as an illustrator I don't know what it's like for um, other kinds of design but I can't I can't recommend a 
good agent enough. It, gotcha. it takes a lot of the the stress out of our jobs. You end up being able to just concentrate on creation more than hunting down um, clients and then invoicing those clients and yeah. getting paid. Mm-hmm. And so, like, I know I got my freelance buds out there that when I said you don't have to handle invoicing, just started to drool. So Yeah. So what makes a good agent a representation? I haven't been with enough agencies yeah. to really know. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, like I said, I lucked into um, an agency that's been very, very good to me. Gotcha. Um, so you, I, I like, and because I didn't search them out, I didn't like, I was really suspicious of them at first. I mm-hmm. thought they were like, I thought they were full of crap. <laughs> And so, like... So it was too easy. It was. It was 100% too easy. And so I was, like, really suspicious of them. And when they sent me, like, the contract, I, like, I, like, tore that thing apart. Good. You and should. They were, they were really nice about being just like, yeah, I don't really understand, you know, what this, like, cost would be. Whatever. Mm-hmm. So they, they waived a couple things for the first year, which was incredibly kind. Um, right. Because, yeah, they, they didn't have to, right? Right. Um, but... Yeah, so it was it was very nice and it worked out. And so as time went on, I worked with them and their clients more and more mm-hmm. um, until it it enabled me to go full-time freelance. They were one of the major factors in me being able to sort of safely make that jump right? Um, because I wasn't going to make the leap without being, you know, feeling secure at the very mm-hmm. least, right? As secure as you can be in this particular profession. Yeah. So, um, yeah, they they made sure that I had enough of sort of like um, regular exposure um, to certain clientele and stuff like that, which is really great. So yeah, it was, it was an interesting thing, but. Yeah, it seems like they really treated you just like as a professional and as a human. Yeah. So just like a workhorse. Yeah, and that's and that's the point, right? Like they are, they are people who, who this is their job too. It's mm-hmm. their profession. It's what they want to do. And they're not out to, they're, they're out to like, make art and right. collaborate mm-hmm. and and you know connect individuals um so and they're really they're very good at their job and i believe i'll be out there for like the first time soon too so i actually get to like meet some of these people i've been working with Hooray, for years that's awesome um, which i haven't told them about yet by the way <laughs> <laughs> just as a ps guys i'll be seeing you in you a like send months. them this recording it's like like i'm coming news <laughs> Yes. Yeah. So we did have the contest come to a close, and we have some uh, submissions that I can show on the screen. Fun. Hooray. This one is by Simon. Ooh, I really love the design pretty. of this one. Nice gradient. I like it. This is WowCon. WowCon. Nice. Good job, Simon. Even has its own little code. Nice. This one's spooky. <laughs> Bloom. Creators of Eternal Darkness. Nice. Jill Going Slayer. with our villain theme. Mm-hmm. And- yeah, I really like how themed this is. You really took it to the next level you know, with the black lanyards and everything. <laughs> All right, this is Blue Moon. Ooh. Ooh I like that this eye. Is, yeah, this is kind of like an absurd design. I like it. The dog. <laughs> Your logo, say hello. Love it. It's very friendly. Yeah. This is um, <laughs> designer to designer. Is that Leonardo? It's. It looks like Sean Penn and yeah. Leonardo DiCaprio <laughs> mixed together. Okay, it's Lean DiCaprio. Mm-hmm. Makes sense. There you go. Well then, but I like it. <laughs> like despite the funniness, nice design. Uh, this one is Create Two Zero Eighteen. Ah, Create Conference Two Thousand Eighteen. Oh, nice. At the back of the head. Cool. Hmm. We've got We Design Creativity Conference. Cute, very Ooh, simple. Nice and clean. Mm-hmm. Clean, corporate, but not in a bad way. All right, we've got these badgies. 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 That's what they named it. So cute. <laughs> got shaping design. Dig it. Mr. Puffy Socks is a speaker. Kyle T. Webster is an I'd attendee. I'd go to that con. Right? What's up with I all these dogs? Corgis. There you go. I have a corgi. <gasps> you do? He's a corgi mix. He's with a really. What? He's a corgi shepherd mix. He's so old. He's so that's awesome. It's an old, old man. Old, old soul. I have an Aussie, Australian Shepherd. Ooh, they're beautiful. Yeah, he kind of looks a little corgi-ish, like with the shaky they, butt. They 100% do, yeah. Mm-hmm. And like the, like that warm tan yeah. color. Love it. Look like little fawns, little foxes. Yes. All right, we've got Nerd Gear Expo by Shelly. 
for all your nerdy needs. <laughs> nice. So you get all your gear, but the little logo is a gear. So that's kind of cool. <laughs> and then we've got Creatures of Design Conference 2018. Really cool kind of dragon or lizard eye logo. Hmm. Nice job, Jeff. And our final submission, the SCC Conference. 14 speakers sharing creativity. Nice. Nice. So would this be, I wonder if that would be their face, like the attendee's face? That would be interesting. It looks like something that would be great with like a spot gloss too. Mm -hmm. Like this little weight section if it was like that. Yeah. I agree. Awesome job, everyone. So I'll kind of curate job, this list down and then you'll pick a winner in maybe like 10 minutes. Yes. Sounds good. Cool. So we have about 15 minutes left. Great. We'll I've done like nothing. <laughs> no, people are saying you're working so fast. I agree. Uh, oh boy. Yeah. Oh, Jim, you have two Vizlas? I like those dogs. They're really Ooh. sweet. They have such pretty eyes. Let us know, chat, if you have any questions for yeah. us. Or just you. <laughs> because Checker. I don't know how much help I can be, but <laughs> you've got the master of the illustrator um, cross-hatching over here, so please ask questions about technique, story, uh, any tips and tricks about getting started with freelance. Let us know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. when you were going to school, did you think that you were going to be a freelance artist? No. Designer? Not in, not in the least. So what were you going to be? I told you I was going to be a waitress because I was going to be <laughs> graduating with a BFA. <laughs> um, oh, no. Yeah, I'm, I'm originally from New Jersey, so I thought I'd be, I'd like, I'd get my degree and go back home mm -hmm. and like make work that I would sell in some gallery by Asbury Park. Like, cool. Yeah, <laughs> I just I did not have high expectations. Uh, that's mm -hmm. for sure. Cause I didn't, I didn't know, right? I I've, I've never had anyone in my family like pursue a creative, yeah, like career. Mm -hmm. And so I was kind of just like, well, I went to school for art, so I'm going to be not doing something that I got my degree for. But I was okay with that because art had always been a very big part of my life. Mm -hmm. um, and then. I sort of just like, not so much fell into it because I think, um, well, I don't think, but I, I put a decent amount of work into getting here. It's right. just, I didn't know how that was gonna turn out. It just, um, it ended up working out, but it was, it was a lot of having no life and a lot of no sleep. Hmm. And I, I do wonder if maybe a lot of that had to do with like the breakneck pace that I ended up taking just because I was, I was really concerned with the fact that, like, I didn't have any kind of training. I didn't have I any see. kind of mentorship either. So I yeah. felt like I was trying to play a lot of catch up. Mm -hmm. And in order to compete, I was worried that that would ultimately hurt me. So I was like, okay, you have, like, I five-year planned it. You have this many years to do this, and you should be here by this time. Mm -hmm. And if not, then you need to, like, reevaluate, right? And so um, it's a lot of goal making um, in terms of, like, large milestones and big milestones. And that's why I'm super excited to be here because, because I started like working with your programs when I was just starting out. Yeah. And so like working with you guys is like a huge deal for me because Aww. like like I did not think I was going to be here. But I'd be yeah. sitting here working with the programs I taught myself in my like teeny tiny apartment in DC when I graduated. Yeah, and you're teaching others how to use them. Yeah, so um, the best thing I can tell people is just don't be surprised by what you can do if you put in the work. So true. Because I didn't think I'd be here. Mm -hmm. So, and I'm I'm in the Adobe office. The That's one and only. Awesome. Well, there's like, a couple, but you're in the cool one. I'm in the office. <laughs> I'm in the office. I didn't say where. I just yes. said the office. <laughs> the office. Yeah. And I think so. um, also not being surprised by what you can do when you really start trying, but like yeah. not being scared to admit to yourself what you really are passionate about. What you want, yeah. yeah. That's a really, really big one. Right, like even going to art school, I had a hard time admitting to myself and others what I was passionate about. Even in this really open-minded and encouraging situation, I was like, I kind of want to work in corporate. And I was like, I can't tell anyone this. <laughs> no one in art school must know. Yeah, but it's just different strokes, man. It's okay. Yeah. It's, yeah. And, and that's like the thing, right? Is it's, I think it's, I don't know how truthful it is, right? How, how snobbish the design community can be. Cause I think stereotypes are stereotypes for a reason, mm -hmm. but you can't like, 
I had a, a designer friend who was a really big snob, and I was worried about getting into this field because yeah. I was just like, I, like, I don't know if that's me, right? I don't know if I'm gonna fit in with that. Mm -hmm. Like, if, like, they're gonna laugh at me when I show up with my little drawings of Priuses, <laughs> <laughs> which they would have totally been reason. It would have been reasonable to laugh at me yeah. for my Priuses, but like, it's it's easy to let other people tell you what you can and can't do, and it's mm -hmm. a lot. It's a lot harder to be brave and admit to yourself and go after something, right? But mm -hmm. it's, I am at the very least testament that you can do this stuff. Because as I say, you shouldn't do it the way I did it, but I, on my own, can tell you that it's possible to get here as long as you're willing to, to put in the work. Yep. Put in the work. Definitely get some fire. Get some fire going in your belly and just get going, get to work. And then one day you'll just wake up with this haircut. And you'll be like, I've made it. And you'll know. And you'll know you've made it. You've gone to the dark side, and it's, it's what you've always wanted. Uh, Stefan is wondering if you can repeat the shortcut for stroke. Or no, 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 blending. Sorry. Blend is option, command, B. Option, command, B. And I'm fairly certain uh, that, like, I work on a, on a Mac, but I'm fairly certain you can um, fiddle with certain strokes in, in the program or just through your your computer as well, mm -hmm. but I'm pretty sure that's the preset one through through Illustrator. Yeah. Um, so you can you can change it if it's more comfortable to do it a different way, but that's that's what I use. Yeah. Does anybody else out there like customize your hotkeys or your shortcuts? Let me know. I haven't really dabbled in that. I kinda like the ones that are already programmed. Yeah. It's like they're kind of built to be intuitive. <laughs> it's like they're like that for a reason. It's like Adobe did it on purpose. They thought it through. <laughs> uh, Rob says, freelance life. I can't wait to do this full time. Yes. Rob, is that the plan? You get you getting there? That's awesome. I love that you're a, an educator, though, Rob. Yeah. Your kids are going to be so sad when you leave. Oh, yeah. But then they can just watch him live stream all the time. Yeah. <laughs> so great. how are you liking live streaming so far? It's it's That's not right. bad. I mean, it's <laughs> it's not bad. I think it's gonna come down to like whether I feel like a total disgrace when it's like the end of my three days and I've got like twenty percent of this finished. Uh, so, but it's it's a lot of fun talking to you guys and hearing your comments and about your dogs and seeing your awesome badges. Yeah, man. That's a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Jeff says you're a natural, Tracy. You're doing great. Says Aaron. Oh, you guys mm -hmm. are nice. Yeah, see you later, Mitch. Have a safe drive home. So in a couple minutes, we'll pick the winner of the contest. Fun. And then we'll kind of close things up because we've got like, things, yeah, things. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and maybe Francisco can tell me if we're ending at 2.55 or 3. 55, 55. all right. So we've got about seven minutes left. Awesome. So get your questions in. Ooh, I have a question for you. What is the yeah. best way for people to find you on the internet? Uh, it depends on how you want to engage. Um, <laughs> how would you like to engage with me? <laughs> uh, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, I, I update as as frequently as I can. Mm -hmm. um, Instagram tends to be where I na like navigate to me too. just naturally. Yep. So um, that tends to have more things on it. Um, so Twitter is the least, um, I think, that I engage on. Right. I try my best um, if people comment. Yeah, but, um, you engaged on it today. Yeah. I tweeted what time we were starting. <laughs> the dang email, man. I should have double checked. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so Instagram is like the hot spot. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty lucky there aren't too many like Tracy Chings out there. Mm -hmm. So I'm... My handle for everything is at Tracy Chang. Nice. So, um, across the board. So really, mm -hmm. you can probably find it anywhere um, that yeah. you might wish to. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah, I love Instagram too. And I wonder if that's like an, a visual artist thing. Yeah. It's like that's how I communicate best. Is I want a lot showing. less chatter and a lot more pictures. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. So I like that. Um, yeah. Agreed. And people were wondering earlier, how yeah. would you recommend uh, someone who's just starting out to market their work, like social media or sending out flyers? Yeah. Not actual flyers, but. Yeah, um, I never went this sort of direct mail route. Um, mm -hmm. The only people I ever contacted directly with updates on my portfolio were my galleries. Um, gotcha. And that's really, other than galleries just sort of finding you on the internet, that's the only way that 
they're ever going to find you is if you submit. Um, a lot of galleries will do like open calls, submissions, and what have you. Um, but otherwise, your the internet is your strongest tool. Um, should you choose to harness it, it's not the only way, but it, definitely in this day and age, it's I think easier and accessible to everyone, right? So, um, yeah, if you if you get your images around the internet, um, you're pretty consistent because it's it's a little hard to like convince galleries like that they should look at your work when they have to bog through like 36 photos of your dog yes. or like your lunches. Mm -hmm. So I've found it's really great to have personal versus professional yep. separated. Mm -hmm. um, but that's that's not a hard and fast rule by any means. No, um, totally. Like so. a lot of people use like they are part of their brand. Yes. And physically and as 100%, a person. hundred percent. Yeah. And yeah. so I did not want that to be the case. So mm -hmm. it was just just, just my art. work somewhere. Mm -hmm. But yeah, if you're if you're super cool and you can be part of your own brand and sell your work, that's great. And you <laughs> should do that. Um, to each their own. Yeah. For sure. Totally. I, I have a hard time navigating that too because I'm like, I want people to know me personally, but I also, like if I submit my Instagram as a portfolio because that's where I have most of my work, like it needs to be kind of serious. And that's why the that's why you have the website is to yeah. act as a more serious portfolio mm -hmm. to, to send people to. Um, so yeah, that's, website's really important, but this day and age, social media is a really strong tool. Right, and if so. you have a Creative Cloud subscription, you can build a beautiful yes. portfolio super easily with Behance. It's uh, my portfolio. Yes. So that's where my portfolio is, just myportfolio.com slash Kathleen Illustrated. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> uh, and it just goes directly from your Behance projects. You just kind of slide them into that portfolio and it looks like a beautifully designed, like you took hours and you really didn't. <laughs> Uh, we have, let's see, awesome. one, two, three, four, five options for top contenders for yes. this badge. Let's do this. All right. So the winner will win a free year of Creative Cloud. Unless you have won previously, then we will hook you up with a different gift. This is Simple Designers. Let me refresh it because I think they might have updated it. Yep. Ooh. Nice colors. Okay. And this little cute little yeah, pattern. Yeah, little happy face ampersand. Speaking to my aesthetic for sure. Yeah. So there they are together. Nice job, Simple Designers. like it. This is brain poop. It's not just funny. I think it's actually a nice design. No, it's a really, really great design. Very I fractal. Like the, yeah. There's like the other that. side. Oh, then there's even like... God, that's so tough. <laughs> there's the full kind of brand identity. So that's so nice. So sharing is Caring Conference by Paul. This one might be my favorite. I just love the texture and the yeah. congested look of the type. <laughs> Got Simon's WowCon. Mm -hmm. And then we have the Doom and Gloom Con, Creators of Eternal Darkness. Mm. Any thoughts? Oh man, they're all so, so good. Um, I think I know which one I'm okay. going to choose. Which one? I think I'm going to go with Brain Poop. Brain Poop! Awesome! So, <laughs> Hafid, you are the winner of the Creative Cloud subscription for a year. Congrats! Awesome design, and not just funny, but also you kind of filled out the whole identity. You yeah. have the, the copy and the, the shapes and the icons that go with it. So, great job. Adobe Live team will be in contact with you soon. Thank you for choosing. Yes, it's very difficult. Um, so, Tracy, you will be back tomorrow. Yes. And the next day. Yes. So chat, do not worry if you didn't get your questions answered or if you'd like to interact with Tracy online, you can go to her Instagram uh, portfolio. Yeah. Check her out. Around. And we will be back at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. So anything you'd like to say to close things out? Thanks for joining us, guys. I'll yes. be back tomorrow. See mm -hmm. you then. Thank you, everyone, for being kind and stay safe out there and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye, everyone. <laughs>